I actually did a little bit of research on on you specifically, and I I'm not even real. I'm AI. <laughs> <laughs> I came across um, a really interesting approach you had to teaching, which was like. My name is Marcel Durden. I am assistant professor of practice for the Gloria Kaufman School of Dance. Right now, in the rehearsal practice, we're constantly having that conversation about what it means for groups of people to identify who they are, making dances from their everyday lived practice. The students did all the work. They had to find inspiration. They had to choreograph it themselves. There's a traditional Italian dance. There is flamenco dance, tap dance, minuet, which is from Poland, line dances from the 70s, a nice array of different movements that speak to different cultural groups. It seemed like you were trying to get your students to tap into their own cultural background and do their own research in terms of what were the steps that was being done in that demographic. We're talking about people trying to reconstruct something that they weren't really part of and they're, they're learning it from like one or a handful of people so they're trying to dance like them. And I feel like the university system is structured so that that is what it is. I know it's environmental, but you can't really create that environment either. Like if you were to go to Japan and tell them it's an environmental thing. You have to party, you have to go to a club. They can't, they can't reenact that. I went to a session and you know, I could tell they have it in their head. Okay. It's a social thing. We have to be together and we have to do this together. So then they started structuring the session. They were like, okay, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the twos over here, all the ones over here. And then they time it. Okay. We're going to session in our group for like 15 minutes and then we're going to take a break and they would call for the break. Then, you know, everybody get their water. And then now we're going to swap groups. So one, two, one, two. They Culture is not something you have to structure like that. It's just something we do. But once you start talking about learning it and teaching the class, then you got to add structure. So you're still like, me growing up, in, with, me growing up as a kid, and whether we playing the dozens or whatever we playing, we cre we might create this game. It's the other aspects that it with, that exist within the game that are part of our everyday lives that we don't have to structure. Mm -hmm. We all know to do it. It's a common thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that ain't a part of your life, you're not going to understand what we asking you to do. Yeah. It's like going to some countries that all right, freestyle. If they don't know what that shit means, yeah. they don't know what you're talking about. You have to explain that. What does that actually mean? You don't have to explain that to me because I grew up. That's all we did. Yeah. And it's beyond the dance. It's in your everyday life. How you talk to your siblings, how you walk, how you laugh at jokes. It's everything in your life is what dance comes out of. Mm -hmm. So when we structure something, we can have a loose structure, but it's all the intangibles of it. We already know. We just grew up doing it. But the intangible parts, other cultures don't know. They yeah. might have their own. So then they'll have to figure out well, what their own is. And when we have to be clear, like how to help them structure, if they're going to structure. Yeah. So it's like, it's the interspace of like, well, what is this? And how does that work for me or them or whatever? Right. And that doesn't always get talked about. If things get to me, things get passed on through a very black American lens. And, and even that is not fully explained. Is it even possible to learn a dance primarily by yourself? Like what you're describing is somebody who's just kind of going and doing the research of like what must have happened. Um, and they're trying to go from their imagination. It's like, can you, like, what was, I'm curious to know what was the results from that? Like, what did you see or like, you know, did it, did it seem like it worked? In the Philippines, it's working pretty heavy. Oh, yeah. Um, that's going to piss a lot of people off, I'm sure. <laughs> because they're really interested in who they are and how that shows up on the dance floor. In the nature of cultural identity, Yeah. People know how to interact with one another. People in the Philippines know 
when you are of a particular group or culture, culture specifically, for the most part, if you grew up in that cultural element, mm -hmm. you know what the signals are. You know what the gestures are. You understand how people walk. You understand the dialects. You understand all that stuff. Nobody has to really explain that to you. That's what people see in an American environment, especially from my age, and you can go back further, because everybody's being themselves because they know what that is, mm. right? You would have to navigate some understandings of, of certain groups because if you weren't used to being around a gay community, you have to navigate that. But gay community knows how. That, that, that's not to say they agree with everything but they understand how to govern themselves, right? And who they are and whatever. The way that I teach hip hop dance is to teach the very structure of it, mm -hmm. which is a human structure. It's not a black structure, it's a human structure. Mm. It's what all human beings do. All human beings bounce. They don't need to belong to one culture or another to bounce. All human beings rock. We sway, we skate, we hop, we all do that. Mm. It doesn't belong to one particular group of people. The aesthetic approach might be particular in one environment to another, but those things in and of, them, of themselves, everybody does that. Yeah. The first thing you do with a, a, a crying baby is to either rock them or bounce them. Gravity is in effect because the human being to stand up is actually resisting gravity. So gravity, put, which is part of the bounce, because it's the pulling us down. It's the releasing of the tension to hold yourself up to allow gravity to pull you down and then you come back up. Yeah. So I'm like, that's a human thing. So when I teach people the very fundamentals, the strict fundamentals of doing any hip hop dance, that's all you need. That's it. If we're, if we're going to agree that these are the things, right? The four, what I call the four bounces, the rock, roll, skate, hop, pause. If we're going to agree that that's the fundamentals, then anybody, in my opinion, has agency to create a hip hop dance and give it their own name. Yeah. Because everybody in America does that. Now, primarily black people do it. Yeah. It's part of the cultural norm, if you will. Yeah. And the the common you know expressions or practices or systems that black folks have is part of that it fits in with that so you're going to see people rocking or bouncing or something right like when i was in the philippines i got to remember the name of it they came up with their own dance based off of drunk people <laughs> and it's dope yeah <laughs> and it was like everybody in the philippines knows this and it was like especially the dance community and it's and it just based off of drunk people. I was like, well, then that's your own dance. Don't nobody else got to know that but y'all. If other people catch on to it, then they catch on to it. Yeah. But I was looking at one of the traditional dances. But they're doing it like this. I was like, take that out, that timing, and just do this. And then switch. Now you create a hip hop dance yeah. based off of your, right? So the gestures have meaning to you, yeah. not you doing the nay nay, not realizing that the nay nay means talk to the hand. Right. If you're nobody in your culture does talk to the hand, there's no significance to you. That's significant to black people. Yeah. If basketball ain't a thing, hitting them folks is about dunking a basketball. But if you don't know that's about dunking a basketball, it's not, you know. So what is it? Is soccer to make up a movement based on soccer? Make up a movement based on your traditional dances. Make up a movement based on any gesture that's common for you and then put a bounce to it because you don't have to, in my opinion, again, you don't have to do, if you want to do the dances that we did in the 80s to 80s hip hop, then do that. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, don't. And if, you, if a new hip hop dance comes out, you can come up with something and be like, we named it. Nobody told Don Campbell he couldn't create a dance. That same reason that Lil Day Day in Columbus, Georgia can create the Hit Them Folks. And nobody told him that he had permission. He just created a dance. Right. Pass the seed, you feel me? Get up. Classes on the folk, you feel me? That's how you got. <laughs> Go heads, you feel me? Then you go break your back. 
you feel, or break your shoulder, you feel, or fall asleep on the floor, you are dead. Them real, or kick them, you feel me? How you kick them? You kick them? Okay. You feel me? Pitch a knee in it with it. But anyway, you gotta hit them for you feel me? Hit them for me. Look at my hips. Oh, why I don't? Oh, past six, boy. Them real hips. Ooh. <laughs> to some kid creating this dance, to the kids creating crumpet, nobody they ain't asked nobody permission yeah. to name a dance, to give it a thing, to whatever. Everybody has license to do that. Yeah. Whether or not somebody else will say it's hip hop, that's an argument. But again, if your fundamental practices are these six, seven things, and that has it. I do know that there are like older dancers say in the popping community on the West Coast that don't like to be folded under the hip hop umbrella because they feel like we're West Coast. We had our own thing and that came before hip hop. Yeah. And so they have their own lineage that they're really attached to and they take pride in the term street dance because that is where they feel like they, they ruled, you know, like if their shoes got shredded because they were dancing so hard in the street, that was like something to be proud of, you know? So, I mean, it, it is interesting to kind of get everybody's different um, take on that. The word street got to go outside in the street for me because ain't nothing glorifying about the street. Nobody wants to be from the street. Nobody wants to live in the street. And street does not define the people. And that's the problem. You're talking about dances that come from people. Street is abs it's, it's too... Um, like ambiguous. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I need... But when I think of hip-hop, I'm like, yo, this is hip-hop in Atlanta. There's hip-hop dances in L.A. There's hip-hop dances in Chicago. There's hip-hop dances everywhere. Yeah. And those are hip-hop dances. If they want to call them street, call them street. I just agree, disagree with that. I think teaching is skill and an art like when I was doing my MFA the, you know there was there was a whole course on on the skill of teaching and that was like a master's level course you know so I, I think there's a lot that dancers or practitioners they don't think about in terms of transferring that knowledge because they're just thinking about dancing they're thinking about the yeah. technique they're thinking about like the practice of dance and not the practice of teaching, you know? None of us in street dance learned that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because- We didn't grow up in studios. Right. We, we wasn't taught about our anatomy and all this. Other. You had to care mm -hmm. about that information. And care is different for everybody, you know, and aspects of the class, you know, not everybody cares from beginning to the end, but that don't mean they don't care at all. Some dancers, they just go in and do choreography. Like, that, that's their warm-up. Five, six, seven, eight. There ain't no warm-up. Let's just go. Like, because the, well, I mean, for me, I'm at, at the university. Those, those kids can dance their behinds off. Yeah. And so what I want to see them do is I'm going to give you the aesthetics. I'm going to give you Philly aesthetics and New York aesthetics. And I'm going to give you some steps. But I'm really focusing on the aesthetics and how to do the dance and how your favorite way of moving can be done to this music. Mm -hmm. So if you like ballet movement, if you like modern movement, if you like them, I mean, look at Check Your Body at the Door. It's a classic example of when you watch them, don't none of them look the same. Yeah. Ejo look like Ejo, and then this one's over here doing karate kicks, and this one's flipping and rolling on the ground, and this one's standing up, and you think it's hip hop. They dance into house music. Yeah. Just dance how you feel like. Your feelings are never wrong. As an individual, how you feel is never wrong. Then how you emote that is never wrong. Somebody will like it or they won't like it. But you dancing and emoting your feelings to a tangible thing is never wrong. I'm all about structure and it's because I'm totally like coming in, I, I came in from totally the outside. You know, not being black, um, not being a New Yorker. So I came in from California and you know, I was like, I really want to learn what um, these guys that I'm watching are doing. So when I uh, eventually came up with my own teaching style, I took into the account 
what if this person knows absolutely nothing about anything, you know, and then I just got to explain it to them, you know. Uh, for me personally, uh, I focus like mostly on like the movement and uh, kind of like the foundation that I saw my mentors and, you know, people that I looked up to were doing because um, a lot of it was actually like very similar. Like a lot of the movements were uh, like each person had some of the movements and it was kind of like I took the most common ones and that's what I ended up teaching. So for me, it's uh, totally about structure uh, to the point where I like hold their hands through the process. And I, <laughs> which uh, for me, like I can understand like, you know, not everybody will agree with that, you know, but for me, I would have appreciated it. It took me a long time to learn the dance because nobody held my hand like I had to. But at the same time, that's how I was able to uh, like hone my teaching skills is because I had to teach myself watching like videos and like how do you do that like how do you even understand the way they're moving because coming uh for me coming from california like when i started seeing stuff like the farmer and the loose legs the weight shifts and stuff were like completely alien i was like how do you even move like mm -hmm. that like I, I couldn't especially coming from hip-hop um which i was learning from new yorkers anyway but it felt like it felt like a completely different thing once i started to learn like how steps it was like how do you do that you know so for me like that's how I came up with the way I teach like which is step by step I will show you the way I learn yeah yeah because you know barring the whole like I mean like we don't know if people are gonna understand the cultural aspects of it at all you know you have to start somewhere to help them get it if you're trying to help them find a place to start I, that you know for as much yeah, for as much as I might be in a disagreement about the steps, I still understand that the steps are a starting sp spot for a lot of people. You kind of set out on this goal to teach people how to how to feel free. And I feel like in order to to allow them to feel even a little bit of that, you have to give them the, the language, right? Like the, the vocabulary or the words to use so that they can start forming their own sentences. Because sometimes... I mean, it's almost like you guys are taking opposite approaches where you're not even bothering to teach them the steps, right? You're like... Oh, I do, but I try not to let them get stuck on them. Yeah. That was the thing I could give them that was tangible, you know what I mean? Like, they can lock in, I can help them, like, is it, is it good? Can we make it better? Whatever, because I don't really believe in wrong or right. Dancing well supersedes dancing correct, in my opinion. But the steps was something to give them, right? And I can drill it and we can get it in your body and now we can start to play with it. And it was always difficult to play with it. It was always difficult for them to transition. They didn't know what to do in that space. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching them. I'm not focusing on the aesthetics. The aesthetics show up in the combination, but I never tell them. They're just thinking about the steps. But it's the it's in between stuff. That's where the aesthetics lie. It's so when you say aesthetics, real quick, are you talking about form? You talking there's, about like transition? For me, there is for me there's signature. Like there are signature things that New Yorkers do. Mm. Right, stalking is one of them. Mm -hmm. Hustle is a major one. Mm. It seems like everybody in New York can do the hustle. And so a lot of the, well, I don't know what to do with my arms. Do you know how to hustle? Because that's going to show up. Oh. Like when you watch Ejo dance, Ejo dances. Yep. Everybody else does steps. But Ejo dances. And the beauty about the hustle is you as the individual dancer become both the partner and the follower at the same time. So it's stuff, we see people like doing the swirls or whatever. That's the equivalent of me dancing with a partner and doing this with her. And my partner's doing that. So now I am the lead and the follow. I'm leading myself doing that. So then my arms are more free up here versus somebody holding my arms right here. There's movements that people do in the hustle 
that's what they're doing with their art because they're used to seeing that in the clubs or they know how to hustle. Wow. And it shows up. So once I started teaching them, I taught them basic hustle. I taught them basic movements that New Yorkers do. Because when you think aesthetics, you think in New York, it's towering buildings. Yeah. It's very fast paced, right? It's just bustling city. I, if you can make it here, all of that plays into how people move and how they interact with you. And just in the social spaces, how culturally diverse it is, all that stuff shows up. Philly, Philly is different on the fact that when, if, if you look at Sekou and Dave, Sekou's next door neighbor in Jersey, them bringing to Philly what New York and Jersey was doing, but Philly flipping it where it was a little more asymmetrical in their approach. It was a little smoother. It was more about spins and like a certain level of control and where they would catch the music and how they would catch the music. That was an aesthetic I would see older house dancers in Philly do that was a little bit different from New York. And so it's like when you learn that, now you're learning the dance element of it. When you learn the stalking, you're learning how to play within a time frame of music to create steps, to create movement ideas, to be with another person, to understand how you interact and engage with somebody, which is going to change the body angle and all this other stuff. I have a question about New York. So when you were saying like this is really New York. It's my understanding that house music came from Chicago. It did. Uh, it did. Really, there is no such thing as disco. It's R&B. We all know R&B means rhythm and blues. Yes. What most people don't know is it actually meant which side of the record. So in the 40s, the fast side of the record was the rhythm side. The slower side of the record was wow. the blues side. It ain't nobody's business if I do. Before it was R&B, it was called race music because it was the music that came out of black communities. But because white communities were into it, they had to sell it in markets. So they had to take it off of race music and they came up with rhythm and blues. But disco is really rhythm and blues. The word disco comes from France. It was an expat who actually moved to New York and opened up one of the first clubs. Disco tech is a French word that means library of records. Yes. New York has just shortened the word disco tech to disco. Uh, but that style of playing when you listen to those records, you are talking about South Soul, which is like a 18 piece orchestra or whatever they are. You, the, the mother, father, sister, brother is another 12 to 18 piece. They're full, fat arrangement sounds of music.
poor kids in Chicago didn't have no, they ain't got no strings. <laughs> they ain't got no whole string section plan. So all they had was machines. And they started making house on machines. So it has a completely electronic sound without the strings, without us. So when you listen to Ron Hardy, when you listen to Marshall Jefferson's, they have his keyboard synthesizers trying to create that big fat sound that they heard from this orchestra. So that's a whole completely different sound that is Chicago house. What is popping in New York is disco. What Frankie took to Chicago was disco. The way they played it, the arrangement, that was their whole thing, but it inspired them kids who didn't have access to studios like that, who didn't have access to musicians. They had access to machines. And it just sounds different. So you listen to Marshall Jefferson, you listen to, to, to Ron Hardy and all that, completely different. And then just, just so while we on that, 1986, Jack Your Body, a performance by the group in Chicago, nobody's jacking and nobody's doing house. You know what they're doing? On stage, the two dancers, you're doing hip hop. In 86. In 86. I got the video. Them, there was a live performance of them doing Jack Your Body and they are doing hip hop dances. And in between that, they're just marching on stage. There's no jacking nowhere. And jacking in Chicago has nothing to do with jacking in New York City. But yes. jacking in Chicago is a thing. The best way I can describe jacking in Chicago is watching black folks in a mosh pit. That shit looks crazy, but it's, it's hype as hell. Is it kind of like the, the Bay equivalent of like going dumb? I don't know, cause like probably, but when I say a mosh pit, I'm not lying. Okay. <laughs> like they are like, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. And this will be a hundred of them. And I mean, I'm surprised ain't nobody got a black eye. Like, they are literally like, and I've seen them push each other. It was crazy. And then the elders was like, that's jacket. I was like, okay. It was funny, actually, because, um, you know, I've taught the New York version of jacking online. And then there was a Chicago woman that was... Oh, like, they'll come for you. Dude. And she was like... That's not jacking. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? I didn't argue with her. I'm yeah. like, I, I told her the, what I told her. I'm all, this is what I learned from my mentors who are New York dancers. So it might not have the same meaning yeah. for you, but this oh, is hey, this is what I learned from them. Yeah, I didn't get defensive. I'm just like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the elders crucified me in Chicago. Because <laughs> I was teaching and I was clear. I am going to teach y'all New York based stuff that is done to house, that they will call house. And it's nothing but elders, club head elders, DJs, dancers. And I tried to teach one step and damn near all of them stood up. There are no steps in house. And they, they <laughs> shut my shit down. They would not hear any of it. They didn't want no explaining, <laughs> nothing. And then Boogie McLaren, um, she taught her class which was the dopest experience I've ever had as a class that was supposed to be housed. She developed this way of teaching. It just, when, I, when, I, when I experienced it that day, it made so much sense because it just took me back to being in the clubs. Cause Boogie was like, all right, you put your hands on their shoulder. You put your, put your, and like, get close, get close. And she just had us all close. And touch, no, touch. Like, literally, she would come and grab you. Put your hand on their shoulder. Let them know you there. And, and we just vibe or whatever. And she's like, and it's, it's, she start describing the club. Started describing the records. And it, we done been in here for this many hours. And it's hot. Now put your hands up because the fan is blowing on you. And it's burning. Like, 
We did all that shit in the club. You would go because you done danced yourself with a fan at. And you would stand in front of the fan and like she ran through all of that. She talked us through having an experience, closing our eyes, smelling the smells, hearing the sound. I was like, that's the best shit I that cause I was there. I was in them clubs. That's what that's what we did. That's actually what happened. Versus here's this stuff I'm gonna go practice. That was a real because we always talking about how do we make you know university, how do we bring the club experience. That shit was like being back in the day at the club. I was blown away. There was not one step taught. And cause Chicago was not having that step shit. Yeah. They're just like, you need to feel what's going on. Do you, when you were in that class, was that also a room full of black people? Yeah, predominantly. So do you feel like that? I made, I made a complete fool of myself that day. <laughs> Cause I said the most embarrassing thing to the wrong person. I still feel ashamed of that shit. But, but I'm wondering like, does that approach only work in a, in a room full of people that can relate? Relate, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Because it's just going to be completely foreign. If you take you know it to like I mean? a university classroom and it's like a room full of random like kids from a different. Yeah. And some of them get it and some of them don't. Yeah. But like that experience with Boogie, it's, it's, it is completely foreign and you're probably under her imagery, her language, trying to create, you trying to create the image of what that, what's going on. But yeah, and then with the university, I'm like, yeah, some of them come in and have a little bit of information, and some of them come in is completely clueless. Yeah. And and Sabale is to me amazing at grounding our students in the information that they need to understand cultural modes and cultural shifts and club culture in itself and all that dynamics. He's he does that like none of us want to teach the freshman because he does such a great job mm. he really sets the tone for us getting them later yeah. but yes that's a that's a hard thing to do yeah i feel like that's basically jardy's work too right is teaching the people who don't have any dance experience at all that's why for me online is like the way to go so they could rewind get back on it, you know, and because teaching in person, I have tried to teach people who have no dance experience in person and it's frustrating for everybody. <laughs> They're like, I'm paying a hundred dollars an hour for this, you know. So I'm curious, like what, what you three have sort of experienced, and I guess I've experienced this in, in my own way too. I think I'm like a decade after Jardy, who is I think a decade after you. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, something like So I'm that. like two decades later. Um, what I noticed is when, when I wanted to learn popping, you had to really want to learn popping in order to learn it. There was no class. You could not go to a, a rec center and just be in a studio and learn it. You had to really hassle an OG and tail them around from one place to another and really insist that they teach you and even then they i don't know they, there's this mentality of like you know i i came up with this on my own i'm not just going to hand it out to anybody who asks me for it so you had to really prove yourself as being worthy of that information of that secret you know now when i'm in the teacher's position i feel like the relationship is sort of reversed where i have to kind of convince my students that this is worth learning you know <laughs> like they want they want a video by the end of the hour <laughs> they want to look good doing it and i'm like it took me 10 years to to be able to hit <laughs> you know that yeah. that you're not gonna at, at the end of the hour look good there's no there's nothing i can teach you in one hour that's gonna make you look good by the yeah. end of the hour. Uh, if they're familiar with ballet, mm -hmm. why do they think, cause they damn sure ain't gonna look good after an hour in ballet, it's gonna take them years and they know that. I feel like even ballet is dying out. Before I forget, there's mm -hmm. a, there was this, um, I, forget, I forget the context of this Instagram post that I saw. Basically it's a bunch of newer dancers saying like, how much time should I dedicate into a dance form? And then they were throwing Numbers around like six months. <laughs> like, and I was like, dude, I have been 20 years so far and I'm working on it. Right. 
six months. And then some people are like, yeah, six months sounds about right. And I, I what's that? I didn't want to go in there. I'm like, you know what? Nobody's going to understand if I come in there. I'm like, I'm going 20 years on, on one thing and I'm still figuring it out. You know, they, they like, need to hear that though. But they need to see a you or you is like, yeah, I've been doing this for 20 years. So I'm still trying to knock this out right. We got to talk about six months. Yeah. They, need, they need to reality check. Yeah, There's a check. lot of... I mean, in a way, people are learning faster because they're being spoon fed. Like we kind of had to reconstruct a lot from like really bad quality VHS tapes. And then there was YouTube at the beginning where the, all the videos were really blurry. So you had to do a lot of homework and you had to have a lot of motivation. Mm -hmm. And now people are learning way faster because, yeah. you know, your tutorials, for example, yeah. you kind of like are spoon feeding people, right? Yeah. So, and so I guess like on the one hand, cause you know, I'll, I'll point at a 19 year old and be like, holy crap, I was, did not look like that at 19. And Jardy's like, well, yeah, because we had to, we had to learn slower. So it's, I mean, there, there is kind of like a speed that's occurring. About six months. <laughs> six months is. But like yeah, they're, six. they are learning really fast though. You know what, even, even if they're learning really fast, what, what's funny is we're, uh, I was checking through my emails last night, right? And then I found an email from you in yeah, from you June, <laughs> June 2004. And you're like, attention soul sector. <laughs> remember this email? You don't remember <laughs> yeah. it at all? It was a really good email. Yeah. And then uh, the gist of it, it is was... basically you told us like, you guys aren't dancing. <laughs> you know, you you got, you've accumulated a lot of steps. But when I see you dance to different music, the tone, the way, the, the t intensity of your movements, it stays the same throughout everything you do, no matter whether the music changes, uh, changes to something slower or faster or harder, softer, it looks the same. And basically you said like, start listening, start listening to the music, you know? And what's funny is like, you know, I probably didn't understand that right away. I'm sure I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then because there's this later email where we t I, I said like i i get what you're saying now you know yeah. and then yeah so people could be learning faster but there's always going to be something missing that you can't just spoon feed, feed into i was gonna people. say i was gonna <laughs> so that was my next gonna be my next point is like they're learning faster the technique but i don't know if they're really learning how to dance either and it comes back to that question of like what dancing is like you, you know we throw that around all the time like just dance or you know you're not dancing you're not you're doing the steps you're doing the technique but you're not doing the dance and i i feel like everybody has yeah just like kind of conflicting understandings of what dancing is so if you're coming into the studio if you were born and bred in the studio your conception of dance is form it's shape, it's the technique, and you're, you've oriented yourself to face one direction, and you've created in yourself this uh, belief system of like, there's a right and a wrong way. And then I'm thinking there's like the physical technique of like, you know, if your hand moves here, your elbows here, and then there's the rhythmic technique, which is like your ability to time your movements but past that, I feel like everybody's conception of dance stops there. And I, I feel like there's so many layers to what makes dancing dancing. And so I'm thinking of things like the way you walk into a room, the way you kind of position yourself at the cipher and you're just standing there. Like that is part of it too, you know, like part of the dance in a way. We, we throw that word around a lot as if we assume that we all in our, are in agreement of what that means. No, we're not. Even yeah. when we think we are, we're not. When you were when you were talking about like being brought up in a studio, mm -hmm. to me that's one of the things that often has Brian limited because Brian in Brian's way of saying who can teach and who can't. We're talking about Brian Green right now? Yeah. Okay. He can often, especially when talking about teaching focus on what's right versus what's being done well. Mm. Dancing well is not about technical acuity. 
And Brian gets stuck in that, I think, because of that background of him having had access and exposure and the, the ability to learn all these other forms and stuff. And he gets into that pocket of what's right. And I'm like, ain't no right and wrong in feeling, bro. Mm. And somebody can be dancing well as shit and not have any of the technique you talking about. But you can't take their eyes off. You can't take your eyes off of them. So it's like, well is completely different than correct. Mm -hmm. And he sits in this correct spot. Well, they're like, they don't have this. Like, he didn't say this, but somebody else posted a clip recently at the classes he taught. And they were like, if you can't do these fundamentals, you shouldn't be teaching house. I'm like, that's tap. Mm -hmm. I don't have, I don't tap. I can do a couple shuffles, but I can't tap. Mm -hmm. But I can dance house and buy house definitions. But just because I can't do that, it was a good technique. The rhythm that they were doing was a good technique that anybody should learn. But just because you can't do that and just because somebody didn't have access to the classes you had access or took advantage of that doesn't diminish what they're doing. And he'll come off like that. If you don't do I didn't realize what he he's does. from the studio. He definitely, I can say this, he definitely spent 10 years at Ailey. Because he went to school with Desmond Richardson, who was a pretty well-known dancer in the dance world. And Desmond's the one was like, yeah, I took classes with Brian. Brian is the one that took me to the club. So I was like, so you were with him in Ailey? He was like, yeah, he was there. And Desmond was like, we learned everything. We had to learn tango. We had to learn salsa. We had to learn African. He's like, we learned everything. So that's where Brian's technique stuff comes from. He learned all that. I don't know this for sure, but I'm but I would imagine that learning to see movement and then see what's being done, he picks stuff up really well because of that training in multiple forms. He knows how to see the movement, he knows how to understand the space and what the body is doing, and he gets it very fast. Or to us, it seems very fast. But that you have to look like this, that's, I'm like, that's very limiting. If we're from the exact same culture, I was just in the Philippines, that folkloric dance looks the same. I don't care who's doing it. This is what the women do. This is what the men do. This is the hunting dance. This is the courting dance. That's what it is. So we can say, they can say, this is how the shape is. This is the timing. This is the whatever. Just because you black, I ain't really saying a whole lot because you're still talking about a number of Africans who had their own movement practices, some were shared, but all of that somehow is retained in our bodies, but it's the multiplicity of it is like, it's hard to be like pinpoint, this is just one thing. Now it's gonna be a bunch of stuff. And we ain't all beholden to the same thing. Yeah, people just, the bounce, yeah, I think, but not everybody bounces that well. And so there's some stuff you can kind of look at and be like, well, maybe this or that, but if we don't agree and do everything the same because it's still what black culture is outside of retaining characteristics of behavior that are deep rooted in African, there's still this amalgamation of the influence of European structures, indigenous structures, these multiple African ideas coming together that is just what it is. And so it's like, no, everybody's not doing the same exact thing, which is, hell, we don't even name them the exact same thing. Yeah. Know you know, one person's Reebok is somebody else's... Uh, <laughs> Robocop. Yeah, yeah so I'm yeah. like, this dance all over the place. I'm like, so how you going to agree? You, you, you ain't got the name solid. You trying to agree on a dance looks like this. That's that's a hard thing to say. Yeah. You know, it. this is why a lot of the questions I have for myself actually have to do with, you know, is it even possible to really teach the, the thing? Like, you know, if we're talking about house or if we're talking about popping, like, can you really teach it because... It's not just a dance. It's like a it, there's a whole world there, and it's you know, f for a moment it kind of reminds me of like ethnography. When you, the only way to learn is if you go to the place 
and you be amongst the people. But what we're doing is we're trying to, we're, we're doing the inverse of that, where we're taking something from a place and a people and we're trying to bring it to a different place and a different people. You're not just trying to bring it to them, you're trying to give them tools to go to the people. But what if that time has passed? Like those people aren't doing that dance anymore and they're not doing it in that place anymore. My, my take on the dance has always been like, the basics are fine because you're learning how to dance. You're, you can make as many uh, of these signature moves, but those signature moves, the moment you stop practicing them, they're gonna start falling out of your head. But dance stays with you forever, you know? So I've been working on my, so people have been trying to push me like, you know, off of my lane. Like for me, it's like, I like dancing naturally. I hear music and I do what my body tells me. Yeah, I practice foundation on the side, but when it comes to dancing, I throw it all away, you know? So you don't, whatever comes out is what comes out. If what comes out is totally terrible, well, I'll blame it on the music or I'm not feeling it, yeah. you know? So I'm not like, I'm not training to be perfect. I'm just training to be present, you know? Yeah. So um, I tell people that and they're like, how does that make me win battles? <laughs> you know what I, mean? I'm like, I don't like competitions. I like organic battles, mm -hmm. but structured competition, I hate them. I hope they all just die one day. When you say structured competitions, are we also talking about like Summer Dance Forever? Like yeah. those are battles, right? But yeah. they're also a competition. Yeah, because I saw this post by the twins about Justin Boo and whatever. For so many people here, not the new generation, but for so many people, this is the number one dance battle in the world. This is what we dance for. I started dancing because I wanted to win Justin Boo since baby. And uh, you know, I, I agree with them. It's like Justin Boo is probably the biggest quote unquote street dance event of the people, by the people, for the people kind of thing. I totally agree with that, but I was in disagreement about what the twins were saying about winning. I was like, if you're doing something to win, you've already lost the idea of the power of dance. Mm -hmm. You don't dance to win something. Right. That's the element we're in now. And, that, and it, that's not to say that challenging someone doesn't have power doesn't have some some space and all this other stuff i'm like it's so much more than that and we've lost that there's this claim that's kind of being thrown around like you know how earlier you were saying like somebody said if you can't do these three moves and you're not you shouldn't be teaching right. there's like other restricting things like that where it's like oh if you can't dance to any music then you're not a real dancer. bullshit Oh, they, they say that with battles a lot. Yeah, in battles. Oh, they would say that in, in battles. battles. You should be able to dance to anything. Oh, you know, a battle come on and oh, DJ battle. plans like, I, oh, yeah, okay. I don't like this record. Oh, you should, if you can really dance, you can dance anything. I'm like, I can. That don't mean I want to. <laughs> yeah. If I wouldn't, if I sit down because you played this shit in the club, what yeah. makes you think I'm going to dance to it in a battle? Play some shit that touches me. Yeah. I'm not a robot. Like, I can dance to anything, but that don't mean I'm going to give you what I can give you because you ain't playing no shit that's hot yeah. to me. So Yeah, I can perfor perform under pressure. I can pull out all of my tricks because I've been training super hard. I've been in the gym. I've been lifting. <laughs> <laughs> For me, coming up in the club and knowing that the trips I had to New York City back in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, being, being able to be inspired by the, all the people in the room is what bred individual voices. And so I remember that. E. Joe in the basement. Boom. Dancing to uh, uh, Steely Dan, Dan Peg. What? Like, it's time to go. And we're like, the club is over and this becomes one of the last records and E. Joe comes back and we sit our asses down. Like, this is class happening right now. This, this, he lost his damn mind and subtle and smooth and elegant and just effortless. I was like, that shit is, I can't believe I just witnessed this shit. Not only were you there, but the people you're teaching, they can't even imagine it. They have no concept of it at all. They have no language for it. They have no experience to like perceive it even. So even if you, somehow had the technology to perfectly recreate what you what you saw and present it to them, they wouldn't even have the cognitive yeah. ability 
to take that in and value it the, the way that you guys value it. House has emo has more emotional knowledge. You have to know who you are. You don't necessarily have to have an emotional understanding of who you are to break. You have to have an understanding of the movements. Mm -hmm. But, and you, I don't break anymore. I, my breaking career was like maybe five years. Um, and I was done by 85. Maybe I'm conflating two things, but I almost want to say that the emotional knowledge you're talking about is like connected to femininity. Like breaking I mean, really be. takes the feminine out of dancing. So there, it's almost like it's not really dance dance. It's, it's performance, it's exhibitioning. It's, um, you know, you're, everything's legible from the way that you pose to the way that you're, you're performing masculinity or like power. Whereas house, that I think house more embodies the aspect of dance that we've been saying is like kind of eluding everyone's ability to understand. That's right? so what I was talking about with the emotion. Yeah. Like to be in them clubs and to understand the kind of records that they're playing, the records speak to the lived experience, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And so for me, my, my, my biggest gravitation was soulful house music or gospel house music. And even, you know, Shelter on Sunday was like, that was like church. When you hear that kind of music, it is asking of you, it is calling, it's all about emotion. A lot of the songs are about love or they're about God or something spiritual. You have to know who you are. Mm. And if not, who you want to be or aspire to be and vulnerable enough to let that person, that idea of you be free. Mm. So, if I'm listening to a song and I'm asking a student, like, we got to find the emotion in this song. The emotion in music is mostly in the melody. And the melody is where you find a lot of arm movements. Not just arm movements, but there's, there's like, what is this song saying? What do they speak? So you're, they're in the intention of understanding the words and the lyrics and the, the connotations behind that and what it means to you. Nothing against breaking. Nobody's asking you that and breaking. Breaking is get it. Yep. Bah, bah, bah. Like get it. That energy, that that's another intimacy that's happening about this energy. This is emotion. Yeah. And so I can get energy out of this five-year-old kid to get this energy. I can't get true emotion out of a five-year-old. Right. They don't know about that yet. Yeah. So you ain't gonna give me this in this song. You ain't know about love. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that is yet. I can't, you can't pull that out of no five-year-old. They're not gonna get it. They might imitate it, but to ask someone to move through house like that is to ask them who they are. That shit's hard to get. Yeah. It's so amazing to hear this description of, I guess you could call it musicality, but I feel like that term has now been uh, referring to like a very specific approach to mm -hmm. expressing movement to music. We was in a shelter. Dave sat down. I can't remember if he sat up against a pillar or a speaker or something. He just sat down. And he was dancing, but then he just sat down. And I was like, dude, you all right? Like, he was like, he just shook his head. He's like, I got nothing. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, I got nothing for this song. It was, it was too powerful. It was too much. It was like, let me sit down. Cause I cannot, what this song is giving me, I do not have wow. the movement to express what this, I just gotta sit down. Wow. And that's what I'm saying. People do, well, I'm supposed to do this. No, you're supposed to feel, yeah. not do. That shit stuck with me. The fact that like, that shit, the intensity of that. And I remember as came on, and we Oof. was in the green room and Terry got up and broke his neck to get out. And he went off and like listening to that kind of house music is musicianship. It ain't too much beat pressing. It's musicians in them studios with Timmy is they going, they Oof. got some beats, but they got some people that they can, especially Louie is going to grab some percussionists, right? And so you got to think, if you go back to disco stuff, musicians are giving you their breath. 
Like they're literally blowing their breath into an instrument. And people are giving you the essence of them when they're playing drums or playing the piano. This is not just pressing something that's making sounds like a guitar. These people are actually physically giving you a gift. And you are celebrating that. You are, in my opinion, as a dancer, becoming the visual representation of sound. Mm -hmm. And then we understand the mood and the texture and the dynamic. And that's what you see when you, when you watch somebody dance, you should see music. That's how I watch, for me, it's like watching Brian and Ejo is. I can see music. I can see what is audible. And that means there's all the dynamics of music that come with that. Devant